PEDP, it's federal money that comes in, mm -hmm. and you make it available to do what? The, the purpose of PEDP is to grow jobs and businesses in Providence. It is, by law, uh, a loan program of last resort, which means that anyone who gets a loan has had to be rejected by a bank twice, or the bank will only fund a portion of their project and they need additional monies to complete it. And so the purpose is, is to be that lender of last resort to take that risk that banks won't take to create jobs and businesses. We're supposed to make these loans as best as possible so that people can survive and get their businesses started. Because this isn't about you know, putting money out there in the perfect world, this is about taking that risk. So there are organizations that come in or groups or individuals, you look at them and say, well, be, geez, we got to be considerate here because this is going to be a tough one. We think if it it's, will succeed, it will be great. So let's do, a low, let's do an interest rate of 3% or 4%. But the loans are typically made in such a way that uh, you don't start paying back on the loan till six months after the closing or the first month after you've drawn down all the money, whichever comes first. And then it usually runs for a five, seven, or 10-year period. The rate has gone up. Um, is it terrible? Uh, I wouldn't say it's terrible. Considering who we're making loans to, I don't think it's terrible, but we, you know, we're going to be a little more cautious in this tough economic time because it's not, only, it's not only are you taking the risk on someone, you're also, they're risking themselves and you don't really want to get people into the position where they're going to lose their house or something like that. So it's, you, you got to be a little more judicious about what you do. Some people would argue, should government be in here when you have probably a better than 50% chance in this economy with some of these ventures, should, should government be loaning them that money when it looks like it's a, it's a, it's a losing prospect to begin with? Well, how do you respond to that? I think it's, a, it's an initiative that's been around in the city for over 30 years, since the program started in the early 70s. Um, I think there's been a lot of success and there's been failure. And I think that what it is, it's really, it's the city almost acting as, a, in a sense, a venture, venture firm, taking a risk to try to grow jobs and grow the economy. But that risk is not paid off in the last couple of years. The, there are more good, than 50 percent. But I think, Jim, the there are good times and there are bad times, and sometimes it, it ha works and sometimes it doesn't. And I think that this is a risk that the council knew about and they agreed to, the mayor knew about and agreed to, and it's a risk that they decided to, to take. Who's ultimately on the hook for that, though? The, Those go belly up, you can't collect, and you ultimately <laughs> write them off. Who gets left holding that? Bank? Well, the money just goes away. But it's, it's taxpayer money. It's taxpayer money, that's correct. It's money that was, that was uh, through the federal government, through the community of block grant. The program was first created by taking block grant dollars and allocating them. These are dollars that we get every year from the federal government to do a variety of things. And those dollars, you know, sometimes they're used to support nonprofits, sometimes they're used to do brick and mortar projects, sometimes they're used to fund the economic development program. But if you're taking loans out against that, that's money that wouldn't be available for those other projects if you're not getting that's it correct. back. That's correct. But when you hear that the mayor, whether it be Cicilline, Paolino, Cianci, or, or uh, Taveras, is committed to this, do you take that as marching orders to get it done? I think it means that we have to look at it very carefully to make sure that, it, one, we can do it, and two, if we can do it, that we can do it in accordance with the rules and regulations. But so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an order. It's, in a sense, it's a direction to look at it and understand the best way to make it happen. And I'll be honest, if I think it's a problematic, and I, I'm not concerned about Paragon, but if, I'm, if, it's, if I think it's a problematic loan, I will raise that issue. These are the minutes from August 3rd, 2011. It said, Mr. Deller indicated that this project is a little more risky and the worst case scenario would be that PEDP would own a building and have to figure out what to do with it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're almost expecting it to fail. No, I'm not expecting it to fail. But you're trying to figure, before I'm, you issue this to, loan, trying you're to trying to figure out what, if we get stuck with it, what will we do with it? I understand that. And that, that's part of doing a due diligence and laying out a picture to the board. I mean, the board has to approve this loan. It's my recommendation. I am basically saying to them that this is a risk. Here's the risk. And if it goes belly up, we're going to own a piece of property that we're going to have to deal with. Right. And, and who's ultimately responsible for that? It's, it's taxpayer money going into this. The city's going to be a landlord maybe on a piece of property that it, that it, could or could not use, where's the accountability? Who, who ultimately is, is held responsible at the end of the day at, when something goes belly up? I think the, the issue is, is whether or not the, the, the nature of the program is to try to take risk and make things happen. On the Los Andes project, mm -hmm. the board basically ratified ex post facto. You closed on that deal before the board approved it. Because we couldn't get a quorum. So you break the rules? 
we talked to the various officers, uh, various members of the board, this is the situation, here's the finance, the loan committee had looked at it, everyone was comfortable with the loan to value. But nobody had voted on it. There are times that given the financing and trying to resolve issues that we, we do that. I don't do it independently. I have, as I said, I discuss it with the mayor and others to make sure that they're okay with it. Because the mayor was committed to that project also. Mm -hmm. And that was reflected in the minutes. Mm -hmm. So in effect, you gave the loan before the board approved it. That's correct. Mr. Tevero, um, you, have, you have a woman who has been very persistent in public records. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about that at your meetings. Mm -hmm. And whatever her motivation is, she's been trying to get some information. And Mr. Tevero has been less than forthcoming in trying to get it. Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah. Because, in fact, she filed a public records complaint with the Attorney General's office, and they sided with her. That's correct. And I'm wondering how, I assume Mr. Devereaux takes, Devereaux takes his direction from you. Not in everything. I mean, we looked to Mr. Devereaux for advice on how to deal with stuff. And there was a long-term uh, presentation to PEDP, to the board, going back years, that we didn't have to meet any of those criteria. And I know, do remember asking Mr. Tevereaux a couple of times about it, do we have to meet it or not? When the decision, when the, when the Supreme Court, when the Attorney General's office said yes we did, I've given direction to everyone to change everything. Who made that, who made that presentation initially that said you didn't have to give uh, it up? I believe it was, uh, I think it was Mr. Tevereaux. Based on what? Okay, so let's I, there is a memo somewhere out there I don't that goes back a whole bunch of years. When the Attorney General said that that's not the case, we said fine, give all the information out. We are in fact changing our web page so that once someone is, gets a loan approved, it's on our web page. Once someone applies and it goes to the board, it's on our web page so people can see everything that we have. Because I'm done with this. You know, the Attorney said no, the, the Attorney General said yes. So it's going to be public. You pay Mr. Tevero how much a year? I know he does a lot of other work, but he, he earns what from he your He earns a, a large amount of money. I don't know the exact total. And you can give me the total? I can get you the total. It's okay. something that's been under concern on my part because the, uh, the amount of money. We've actually changed his workload in the last few years to try to reduce some of those bills. Because the fact is every time he deals with one of these public records mm -hmm. requests, the clock is ticking, is it that's, not? That is correct. Wouldn't it have been easier to just say, here? It would have been, but there was this concern of confidentiality that he was saying had to be there. So, Okay, and you were relying on his advice. That's correct. And, and the fact is, and you may not know this, the same request that uh, the young woman made in April that I made in August to you, which you passed on to him, and that another news organization made in October about the default rates, he gave out the exact same information. Does your default rate change over six months? You have an aging report, do you It not? should have changed over the six All right. So the guy who you're paying however many X numbers of dollars an hour is basically cutting and pasting. Mm -hmm. I put in a request for all the board members. He sent, me a, he sent me a list from 2009. So I went to him and said, is this the latest list you have? He said, oh, I'll see if I can get you a new one. Now that's the guy representing you to the public. Well, he shouldn't have done that. Right. It's not a personal attack on him, but, it's, but you're paying him good money when the public wants information. And what has come across here is that you have something to hide. When, in fact, you've sat down with me and been very open about everything. You've answered my questions. You've certainly stepped up to the plate and said, hey, the buck stops here. But to other people, that, that, that message is not going out. So I'm just curious for, for an organization that... Is, is taking risky loans with taxpayer money, what the word is to the public about how the PEDP operates, sometimes in secrecy and sometimes using figures with moratoriums that make your figures look a little bit better than they are to the public. What is the word going forward to the people who have entrusted the tax money to you? We have, as I said a couple of times, we are in the process of investigating and changing everything. Um, we've been sitting down with HUD to go through our program audit and line out all the points and reach an arrangement. We're trying to set up a series of meetings with the mayor and the city council with HUD representatives to review not only the PEDP program, but all the other federal programs that we run to lay all the rules on the line. Uh, we brought in a new director of fiscal operations. He started this week, and his goal is to get everything straightened out and get the loans on a more clear tack. We're putting everything on the web page. I mean, my bottom line is, yeah, we make mistakes, but whatever we do is going to be open. Well, it hasn't been open so far because it's been like tooth and nail trying to get the information. And, and I explained why that was okay. that way. But, okay. but going forward, it's a new we're, day? We're changing.